So today we are going to start Unit 1, Module 3, Lesson 3, Scrolling. This is a scrolling game. Now, the old-fashioned way of doing scrolling games will be to create a single background, make it really, really long, and move your character through that background image by shifting the image slowly through your program. Unfortunately, that means the game ends when you get to the end of the background. And it becomes a little bit challenging because you now have to design this huge background and the game cannot continue. It has to stop. You get to the end of the edge of the screen, you're done. So a lot of games do that. They have the scrolling background, especially some of the older games like the 1980s and stuff. But a lot of the modern games use the idea of the computer creating a infinitely large random background. So the background just continues forever and ever and ever in a computer generated experience. One way that they do that is with something called fractal design. They learned a long time ago, wasn't really implemented because they didn't have the software to do it and the computers to run it for the consumer, but they learned a long time ago back in the 80s, that if you take a fractal, you can use that fractal to represent things in nature. Like fractals can be used to represent trees. Fractals can be used to represent grass. Fractals can be used to represent mountain ranges, coasts. And they're all essentially get boiled down to an equation. The computer can use that equation and some random values to draw the landscape and you move through the landscape you may have played Minecraft in the past and you may have seen the option in Minecraft to add in a new seed well that seed randomly generates your landscape but it generates it so it goes on forever now I know some of the Minecraft worlds are bounded in that you come to an edge and you can't go any further but that's just because of the size of the computer memory they want to put you in so it can retain everything you do throughout the Minecraft world. But it doesn't have to be bounded. It could go on forever and ever if you had an unlimited memory of your computer that could keep track of what you did, you know, three miles over there versus now you're here doing something different. The computer can't keep track of all that. It's too big of a space for it to do it, so they limit it in Minecraft. But in games where you only need to see currently where you are now and the past doesn't matter, a lot of the games, uh, like the games where you're flying through stuff, the space games, things like that, where the background is really just that. It's there as a background or there as a currently changing obstacle. And you don't really carry what, what happened before. The computer generates that information for you randomly and provides the information there. And you only need to see the screen in front of you and then it's gone. So we're going to do that today. I'm going to teach you how to do that in Scratch. And we're going to use the cloning method that we've talked about before in order to get Scratch to build a moving background for us. So you've all heard of the game Flappy, Ga Flappy Bird. This is a version of Flappy Bird, uh, only it's a helicopter. And you know, use the keyboard to press the space or something like that to get the helicopter to move up. And if you stop pressing the space, the helicopter starts to drop down until you hit the space again. That's kind of effectively what Flappy Bird is. And Flappy Bird just goes on forever, right? It doesn't stop. Continues and continues and continues. So we're going to make that game. Feel free to make it Flappy Bird if you really want to. But this is a helicopter game. And essentially, this is how it works. We're going to have one sprite called Gliding Bars. And it's going to have two different kinds of backgrounds. One is going to have a gap in it. And one is going to be a solid bar. And when we click the green flag, our helicopter is going to make, not our helicopter, excuse me, our bar is going to create a clone of itself every five seconds. So it's going to hide the original and then create a clone of itself every five seconds. Once it begins as a clone, it's going to randomly switch costume. Now, right now, I only have two. Actually, I think there's three. There's three different backdrops. But you could have as many different 
styles of this thing as you wanted to. You could have 50 different styles and have it randomly choose from 1 to 50, any one of those backdrops. And it sets the backdrop to that. So either it's going to be the vertical bar with a hole here, or there's a hole at the top, or it's a solid bar, which would be very difficult to play. But you know, some type of obstacle provided for the user. Then they move it to the location of 240 with the y value of 0, and have it glide to negative 240 with a y value of 0. So essentially, it starts from one edge of the screen and then glides to the other edge. And it's going to take approximately five seconds. We set the time in there. Now, one of the upgrades to this would be to take this time value here and this time value here and make it a variable that you could control. You know, you could speed the game up. But these two numbers, the, the wait five seconds and the glide, have to be matched together. So that way they end up um, gliding along the screen and it makes sense that when this one gets past the edge a new one gets created. I think it actually gets created slightly before the other one gets past the edge of the screen. The other thing that goes on here is when the green flag is clicked the helicopter is going to go to location 00. zero. They set its size because the image was a little bit too big. It's going to wait two seconds and forever it's going to drop minus two. So it's always dropping a value of minus 2 in the y direction. That's how we're getting the helicopter to constantly drop down. To get the helicopter to go up, um, we just have the up arrow pressed, and we change it by 20. So it goes down by 2 and up by 20 whenever you press the space bar or the up arrow, whichever key you want. You can even make it a mouse trigger if you want. So they press the button, helicopter goes up 20, drops down 2, goes up 20, drops down 2, drops down 2, drops down 2, drops down 2, goes up 20. So the goal of the game is to try to get the helicopter through the spaces without crashing into it. If you crash into it, touching green, game's over. Now you could put something in there that if you touch blue, maybe one of your backdrops is blue, that you get to the next level. Maybe the next level's faster. So, and you can make that happen randomly. Or you could put some other qualifications in. Maybe there's a clock running, and if the clock gets to a certain thing, then you switch to the next level and things speed up. You can add a score to this that's based upon a clock, that the longer they go, the higher their score gets. So that's one of some of the things I want you to think about adding to this. Essentially, you're going to take this project as is. I'm giving it to you. It's my gift to you. And you, just like we did with Pong, you're going to modify this project to make it your own to make your own backdrop. One of the things I did when I did it, and this is the version I think I have in here for you. Let me... So I've given you some starting code, and then there is the original version. The original version is the helicopter version, so let's take a look at that first. This is put out by scratch. And the goal is to press the space bar and get the helicopter to fly through the spaces. And it's randomly choosing these different images. Notice they disappear once they get to the other edge of the screen. Oops. And I hit, and the background changed. And I hit it and it ended. So if we look inside this, we can see that the code for helicopter is fairly simple. Space bar gets it to go up by 20. It's on a forever loop where it's dropping by 2. Uh, if it touches the green color, then everything stops. The green gliding bars. Like I said, it's on a loop of five seconds, and it glides for eight seconds. This changes the score, and it deletes itself after it's finished the glide. That's important. Otherwise, they'll start to just kind of pile up in memory. You won't see it. They'll just be like behind you on the screen. But it'll slow down the computer eventually, because the computer has to keep track of all those in memory. So this delete the clone is important. You want to make sure at some point it deletes itself. Uh, that's one of the issues that some of you guys have with the orange square purple circle and you're using the clone. You never had it delete itself. And the computer kind of ended up slowing down after a little bit because it had so many of them to keep track of. So this is really important, deleting the clone and making it disappear. If you look at the backdrops for this, or the costumes, I should say, you can see that I have three different costumes. So what I said to myself is, self, what if I tried something different and I mixed this?
to a different type of scrolling game. And I kind of added, so this kind of gives you an idea. This is the same scrolling game taken up a notch. So I'm controlling it. I can move uh, left and right. I forget which key I use. Maybe I use the up arrow. Oh, I forget which keys I used. Oh, B for boost. There we go. And if I hit the asteroids, I explode. Gives me a score. Let me, plot. Let me try that again. Green clay. So, well, that's weird. Okay. So, moving around left and right, you can see it's dropping. I have a boost. I can move left and right. And then I think I also have a, a space. Uh, space reverse thruster, so I can go backwards. So this is essentially the same program, only I've changed the direction a little bit, and if I crash, I die. So you guys are to uh, put this inside of the assignment and submit it. You need to Make sure you modify the game in some way. You don't have to modify it as much as I did, but you would start with the Flappy Bird helicopter thing and modify that in your own choosing. Add scores, maybe change the background, uh, change the image. I went so far as changing the direction of the scroll, scrolling it vertically rather than scrolling it left to right. All those different things are available to you, so have fun. I expect some good projects, and we'll see you next lesson.